Good morning YouTube. Well I got a video for you today. I'm going to make, um, basically I'm going to show you how to remotely switch whatever you want um, from the spare third channel on your FlySky uh, GT2B in this case, uh, but any, any radio with a third channel, with a spare channel, uh, this will work to switch whatever you want remotely. So I'll run you through that and explain kind of the, the theory behind it. So essentially I got the standard FlySky kit, came, I think it was like 20, 30 bucks, you know, the cheap, cheap, cheapest basically standard transmitter receiver that you can buy. It's the GR3E receiver in there. And basically when you turn on any receiver, for instance, it's going to put power down. Everything just turns on, boom. So if you plug something into that third channel, you turn the truck you turn the truck on and it comes on with the truck when you flip the switch. Now you can hit this switch on here as much as you want and it will not turn off or on whatever you have plugged into here. The reason being is you need an interface between the two to actually modulate and control that pulse that's sent back. What happens is you click that switch, a pulse is sent back on that third channel on the signal line, which turns it on or off depending on the situation it was last in, yada yada. So you need an interface in between to modulate that. So there's only a couple different options out there. This is the one that I have used um, a couple different times now. A couple different times now, sorry, and uh, I've had great success with it. It's the Turnigy remote controlled on off switch. Um, I shortened it up. Comes with uh, just standard packaging and directions. I picked this up at Hobby King. It's about six, seven dollars. It's not that cheap, but it does work very well. And it has a, a variety of functions you can use it for. It's good up to 10 amps, which is quite a bit of power, at 30 volts. Now, if you're going to run it, if you're going to run 10 amps off it, so you're going to use it for whatever you want to run it for your BECs or anything like that, you want to run power to a servo from it, it will draw pack voltage. So if you're running a 3S, keep that in mind. It's going to provide 12.6 volts on a fully charged pack. Is that what it meant? No. 8. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so you need to limit it. Lots of things have, like, you know, I'm using it for lights, for LEDs, so I'm going to actually wire in resistors in line, which will limit the incoming voltage or current uh, so that I don't pop the LEDs. So you need to keep that in mind. Whatever you're going to be powering with it will draw pack voltage. If you feel like running 3S, it's fine. You can hook a fan up to the output of this, but just keep in mind that it's got to be a 12-volt fan, and uh, you might need to limit current going into it. Most LED sets and that kind of thing have some sort of a current limiting uh, resistor or whatnot in line so you should be fine but just make sure you know what you're doing as this can, can provide 10 amps. If you're going to run 10 amps of power you need to use at least an 18 gauge wire on this little spaghetti wire. Okie dokie. So off to the races. Let me explain a little bit of the theory here behind this. So the switch itself, I just shortened it up. I used my sermon, or it comes like the lead on here is like, I don't know, foot long or something like that. I cut it off and just, I used my servo terminals or my servo crimpers and certain, some, new ter some new terminals and a new Futaba style plug. Crimped it all on there. If you're interested in how I do that or how to create your own servo extensions, Y splitters, any kind of wiring thing for your truck, you can do it all yourself for a fraction of the price of what the hobby shops charge for these wiring, or for the wiring. Like I went and picked up, you know, just a Y adapter. They charge you eight bucks or something stupid. You can make it for 50 cents. So these here are servo uh, terminals, they're called. Now these come in two different kinds, with the males and the females. These ones here are the males. As you can see, they got the pin on the end. And these ones here are the females. This one over here. So these ones here are the females. Essentially, these slide into there, and that's what creates the circuit, right? You get ten sets of these, so ten pairs, um, and then you get the connectors. Each of them go into these, and then they snap into the housing in the middle. 
uh, which will essentially turn into something like uh, this with the two plugs in there, which allows you to plug in for power. So if you're interested in that, you can pick these up, Hobby King, 10 sets, like I said, for, I think it's four bucks, and the terminal, or the crimpers themselves are the expensive piece. Hobby King does sell them, they were out of stock when I grabbed these. I got these from A-Main Hobbies for about 18 bucks, and I love them, they work great. I have not even wrecked a single connector with these things, they've worked flawless. They're not ratcheting, and my only beef is that they don't have a, a lock to close them. Let's wrap a <clears throat> zap strap around the handles when I'm done, just to appease my OCD. So, let's get on the wiring here. So what I'm going to do, my truck set up a little funny in the fact, out of the way my power wires, I have these big giant five and a half mil bullets that just go into my batteries. So, essentially what you need to do is hook up two power lines. Well, not two power lines, but two wires, one off of each your positive and your negative terminals from your battery. So these, like me, I hooked them right up, boom, and ran right into the receiver box. I'm just using two black wires because that's what I have. If you have a red and a black, it makes it a lot better for color coding and just safety reasons. I'm an electrician by trade. I'm very, very aware of what I'm doing. Uh, if you're not, just double check, triple check. Multimeters are very handy. They can even tell you if you reverse polarity, yeah, well, multimeters are a very handy tool. But these things are pretty pretty idiot proof nowadays. They don't really let you do too much uh, wrong in the sense of hooking them up. They protect themselves pretty well. But still, be careful. So third channel here is what we're after. So I shortened up my cables. Now this switch just has two reds coming out of it and then your uh, your three wire plug that plugs into the receiver and then you have these jumpers. These jumpers here will actually determine the state of the switch depending on what you want it to do. If you would like it, say every single time you click the switch it's going to shut off. So say it's going to run something on your plane like you know, you're going to click it and it's going to do something the same every time you can do it. Or else, in my case, I want it on off alternately depending on the last situation. So if I turn the lights on next time I click it, it'll turn it off. And then if I shut the truck off and turn it off, or turn it on again, I have to click it to turn it on again. It won't start in the on position, which is what I like. So I shortened all my wiring up. Now the first thing you need to do is provide power to one side of this switch. So like I said, I ran from my, from my red, my positive, and my negative right into the battery box. I took power to one side of this switch. The other side needs to go to the load. Now I wired up, I made another little wiring harness. This here is going to be what I plug into uh, to switch. This will be my switching line, for instance. So power to one side of the switch, the other side runs power to this. So now the black that's coming back from this has to tie in to the black that you wired from the negative post of your battery. If you do it that way, it'll work perfectly. So again, I'll explain it one more time, nice and slow. Hook the two up from the battery terminals, negative, positive. Positive to one side of the switch. It does not matter which side. The other side runs to the load. So in this case, it's the positive line here. The negative coming back into this receiver box ties in to this negative here. So that's these two right there. And that's it, done deal. Plug into the receiver flip everything on, plug in a test load and it will switch no problem. So I switched the plugs around uh, to have it polarity sensitive so when you plug it in you got that tab, it didn't come with that. Straightforward though, brown is negative, red is positive, yellow is signal. Okay, so I got this old body here with the LED light kit inside. This is what I'm going to use to test to show you the switching capability here. So I've just wired this up basically straightforward, um, and this is what will get plugged in. So make sure you got enough room, uh, leave enough lead like coming out of your box so that it's easy to plug it in. Like I always wrote this power line somewhere convenient, and then I zap strap it so that when you pull the body off and on, it can't get ripped out or anything, right? Okay, so I just plugged it in. Uh, this is the transmitter here now so you can see and that's it just give it a click on the third channel there and there's light so it's pretty handy you can use it to run whatever you want uh, if you want to kick fans on so you're monitoring temperatures with your 
whatever. I'm gonna kick fans on, boom. You wanna use it to drop a bomb with your plane or anything. It can be, the sky's the limit. Really, your imagination is the only limiting factor there. It's pretty straightforward. Like I said before, there's really only a couple different uh, switches that I've ever seen that can do this, basically. I've done this with my Traxxas TQI Summit controller as well. Uh, there's another video showing you how to do that if you're interested. It is exactly the same setup. I just decided to put one up for the Fly Sky radios, as many other people may find this video, simply because they don't have a Traxxas radio. So these are really cheap cost-effective little radios if you're looking to use the third channel to switch something it is absolutely possible but you cannot do it in stock form you need to purchase the receiver controlled switch now I've heard of a lot of guys making these out of uh, like potential like they take a pot from a an old servo say like this here is an old servo they call it a pot pot sort of for potentiometer um, they can use these to do the same function now I haven't really played around with it too much I know it's possible um, however, I'm not too much help there. I don't have a lot of insight. But guys, do do it. So if you have an old servo or something, uh, you might want to scour Google and see if you can find out how to do that. It might save you a couple bucks. However, it's a lot cleaner, nicer, more professional finish. Just go with the Trinity switch. So that's that. One thing I do like is say um, when you turn the truck on, if the transmitter's off and the lights are plugged in, the lights will flash. Here, I'll show you here. I'll Lights are, lights are off. It's kind of nice. So there you go. Works like it should. If you have any questions or comments, you can feel free to leave them below and I would be glad to help you out. Always here for, to help those in need. So thanks again for watching guys, hope to see you again.